I'm Manaf Hassan, 20 years old, born in Berlin, Germany, both parents from Syria, law student and chairman of the Union of Syrian Students in Germany. Today I'm standing here as a Syrian because my parents are from Syria, as a German because I was born and raised in Berlin, and as a human being because at the end it doesn't matter where you come from, because we are still all the same. As long as we are not George Bush or Hillary Clinton. As we, all, as we all know, Syria is going through rough times for nearly eight years. And the reason why it is still possible to speak about Syria in the way that we know it is the brave and honorable Syrian army and its allies who are fighting terrorism of nearly half of the world, year, uh, world for, for eight years. And of course, it is still possible to speak about Syria in the way that we know it because of the brave and honorable president of the Syrian Arab Republic, President Bashar al-Assad. <laughs> it is well known that only allies of the Syrian Arab army are legitimated to participate in the war against terrorism. Political legitimation is only given to those sta states that got empowered by the elected legitimated Syrian government. So the USA, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey, Israel, France, Jordan, Germany, Denmark, Australia, and Great Britain are not allowed to breeze over Syria if the Syrian government doesn't accept this. And that means that these states are not fighting terrorism in Syria? No. That only means that they are participating, participating in the war on Syria that some of them set off themselves by infiltrating Wahhabi, Salafi, and Muslim Brotherhood terrorists who are responsible for the death of more than a million people in Syria. They tried a lot to destabilize Syria and to force a, they call it regime change. They wanted to enforce their geopolitical interests, for example, to expel Russia from the Middle East by taking their only military base in Syria. I assume you all know about the gas pipelines from Syria to Europe to weaken Russia's economy and about Syria's seemed infinite oil reserves, etc. They lied about chemical attacks as they did in Iraq and the light about a lot of other things to achieve their objectives. But there is one big difference. Syria's government, Syria's people, Syria's area, and Syria's allies, they are one. They knew it would be difficult to achieve their objectives, but they didn't know that this is impossible. But now they know. My beloved friends, the end of this horrible war is near. Damascus, Aleppo, Homs, Hama, Deir Zor, Dara, Latakia, Tartus, and so on and so on. All are sitting on Syria's lap. Some still, some again. Idlib and some smaller towns are following soon, and then the real revolution will start, if necessary. The revolution against all illegal occupants. I'm especially talking about Turkey and the USA. But let's think from step to step. Because it seems that the big powers reached an agreement. But I don't want to go too deep in detail tonight. This is my friend Kivot Almasian's exercise. I just want to give you an example to show you how world politics is working nowadays. On the example of Saudi Arabia and Germany. First of all, it's important to know that if it comes to German arms exports, then Saudi Arabia is the number two buyer under third countries means the countries not belonging to the European Union or the NATO. This year alone, Saudi Arabia bought arms from Germany for around 416 billion euros. The past few years were nearly the same. The German opposition parties are criticizing the German government for years to stop the arms exports to Saudi Arabia because of its human rights policy in and outside of the country. And so the majority of German citizens do. It is a shame that the German government is only now starting to think about to stop arms exports to Saudi Arabia, now that the pressure is writhing and writhing after the death of the Saudi journalist Khashoggi in the embassy of Saudi Arabia in Istanbul. By the way, I didn't like this mother, Muslim brother either, but humanity has to maintain. And as we all, as we all know, Saudi Arabia plays a big role in, in the Syrian and Yemeni war. The Saudi regime funded and supported terrorist groups in, so in Syria from the beginning 
and they are still supporting these terrorist group for a, they call it regime change. One million of civilians died among others in cause of this brutal Wahhabi Saudi regime. And in Yemen, they are bombing dozens of civilians and true freedom fighters who are trying to defend Yemen from Saudi Wahhabi influence. And indeed, famine and death from starvation on a huge scale are being used as weapons of war in Yemen by this Saudi regime. Let's not, for let's not forget about Bahrain, Iraq, Afghanistan, Lebanon, Nigeria, and Southeast Asia, where this regime spread chaos by the Wahhabi Salafi Jihadists. Even Europe started to shake by these from the Saudi regime funded and supported terrorists and through their terrorism, crime, threat, and, and, and extortion. So it is really sad that they start to discuss only now about a stop of, a stop of arm exports to this Saudi regime. Especially if you take a look at the coalition agreement of the two German parties who are forming the government in Germany. This issue is stating the stop of arms exports to, to countries that are directly involved in the Yemen war. And I don't need to tell you that Saudi Arabia is more than involved in this dirty war. So it is okay, better say stop arming Saudi Arabia now than never. But let's not be hasty. The German government is still checking which arm deals can be re reversed. And maybe, who knows, they are just waiting for the quietness after the storm named Khashoggi. I mean, I don't have any news from him, from him for a long time. This, this example shows us how dubious world politics is working nowadays. When the Skripal case were present, they all wanted to punish Russia, although there were no evidences. In the Khashoggi case, everybody is trying to, to escape from the topic just to maintain the economic agreements. Same regarding the case of Saudi Arabia compared to Syria. Many Western powers are whitewashing the Saud family who gave their country to their family, uh, their, their family name. Saud family, Saudi Arabia. As kings and princes, although these tyrants have no human rights in their country. On the other hand, they are doing a disgusting smear campaign on the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad. Although Syria is one of the most developed countries in the Middle East, just to force a government change. So the questions, who needs democracy? In which country the opposition is good or bad? Who deserves human rights? These are questions of interest for them. Politicians who shirk responsibility destroy the credibility of politics. But I'm happy that humanity is winning this time in Syria. This is a big sign for the world. Cohesion, trust and love is strong enough to quench the evil. Finally, I want to thank for the invitation to speak here tonight. I would like to say that I am very happy to be part of Berlin Reykjavik Damascus and I would like to send my best regards to all of you. May all the honorable Syrian soldiers and civilians who died in this dirty war in Syria rest in peace. Surviving relatives, we wish to express our solidarity with the pain of those who have lost their dear ones and their homes under the bombs and those who have been forced to abandon their homelands. May God protect Syria and the world and all the people who support this country during these eight years. Freedom for Syria, freedom for the world. Thank you all.